Content warning. The following video contains material that may be harmful or traumatizing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Chapter 6. Extus. In the brief instant before the transition between entropy and Extus, I was hoping that I would get Godzilla and Anguirus back. As the board appeared, I saw that my wish was half granted. I had Godzilla back, but no Anguirus. I would have preferred both. But despite Anguirus's neat abilities, I would have chosen Godzilla if I had to pick between the two. Extus had two different color temples, white and pink. A white, a pyramid, what looked like some modern buildings and two icons I couldn't figure out at the time. Their new bosses were Kumonga, Gorosaurus, and not Ghidorah, who I was dreading to see, let alone fight. With Godzilla back, I was expected. I was excited again and eager to explore, yet still cautious. I went to the quiz level first, just as before. This time, Face's questions were more random than ever. Quiz four. Question one. Do elephants breathe? Answer, yes. Reaction, weird face number two. Question two. Have you ever been molested by a family member? Answer, no. Reaction. Weird face number six. Question three. Have you ever raped anyone? Answer, no. Reaction. Weird face number eight. Question four. Is green your favorite color? Answer, no. Reaction. Weird face number 10. Question 5. Is the computer the pinnacle of modern technology? Answer. Yes. Reaction. Weird face number 4. Question 6. Are you a tough guy? Answer. Yes. Reaction. Weird face number 12. Question 7. Can you fly? Answer, no. Reaction, weird face number 9. Question 8. Can you stand on your head? Answer, yes. Reaction, weird face number 7. Question 9. Do you hate raccoons? Answer, no. Reaction, confused. Question 10. Do you feel blame? Answer, no. Reaction, weird face number 11. Question 11. Would you like a new monster? Answer, yes. Reaction, surprised. Question 12. Will you miss me? Answer. Yes. Reaction. Sad. I was happy that I was getting a new monster, but that last question bothered me. Will you miss me? Is face referring to when I finished the game, I thought? Since the revelation of the game's truly otherworldly nature, I wasn't sure what to think of face or anything else, but something about that last statement gave me a genuine feeling of sadness from face. 
as I was thinking about this, the, the game had gone back to the board. I had a new monster, but I had no idea what it was supposed to be. The sprite had a slight resemblance to Rodan, but the head was totally off. I moved this mysterious newcomer to a white temple icon and started the level. When I started the level, the screen appeared with the text, Find the Gem, presumably instructions for beating the level. After that, I got my first look at my new playable monster, a hairy, dark blue creature with bat wings and a skull-like face named Solomon. And also, and I also found that my path was blocked by a beam of light and a small pillar with a plate on it. I figured that the beam of light was blocking the exit. So I have to find the gem to drop it on the plate to deactivate the beam. How exactly I was going to do that, I don't know. There wasn't anything in the original game requiring you to find an item to beat a level. I'd have to find out when I obtained the gem. The only direction I had to go was left, and so on I proceeded. So on I proceeded. Solomon was an interesting monster, to say the least. He was capable of both flight and a heat beam, both of which proved to be very useful. He could also kick and slash with his wings, but he couldn't duck. The White Temple's music was a vocalizing choir, or a video game approximation of such. It's hard to describe, but it had a very holy sound to it. It wasn't long before I started running into waves of strange new enemies. They did little to stop me. I ran past them while slashing and didn't take any damage. There was a pause behind each new wave of enemies. After you had killed about ten, there wouldn't be any for about a minute. Then the next wave would appear. After five minutes, I noticed holes in the floor and ceiling. Guillotine-mouthed creatures were rapidly flying up and down the crevices. So I had to time my jumps carefully because I didn't know if I'd get another shot at this. Luckily, I managed to get through without a scratch. I'm just lucky, I guess. After that, I found myself at the end of a hallway, facing some kind of mini-boss monster. It moved fast, and it had some projectile that it shot in four directions, but I killed it quite easily using Solomon's heat beam. When the battle was over, I had my gem, which was inside the creature's head. I found that I could pick up and hold the gem by walking over to it and holding down B. I made the long trek back to the start, deposited the gem on the plate, which deactivated the beam. I left the sage and was shown what was probably the strangest quirk relating to the Solomon monster. Every time you complete the stage or defeat a boss with Solomon, this screen appears. I have no idea what still the best 1973 means. Neither did date nor the phrase have any meaning or significance to me that I can think of, and I've spent a lot of time thinking about it. The next level I played was the one that I call Bronze Pyramid. I used Godzilla and found that he had been leveled 
up to 12 since I last played him in Dementia. The bronze pyramids were fairly normal as far as levels go, but the visuals were quite interesting. Almost unusually colorful and lively. The music had a fittingly Egyptian style to it. It was a slow and mysterious sounding. I strolled through the level fighting off various enemies and none were too difficult, although the ants could be a pain if you ran across, ran into too many at once. My favorite enemy was this giant reptile I encountered about halfway through. At the end of the level, I came to a pyramid and I engaged in yet another mini boss fight. Although this one was a bit different because I had to fight two of these monsters at the same time. Individually, I could have dealt with them easily, but fighting both of them at once was challenging. But I sped things up by tricking one of the twin beasts into barbecuing his brother by jumping when he used the flame breath. After defeating the twin monsters, I noticed something strange after returning to the board. I was now able to move my monster piece anywhere on the board without limits. Normally Godzilla could only move three spaces each turn and Mothra could move five. I wanted to try out Solomon some more, so I moved his piece to one of the brown pillars, looking icons with colored dots and started the level. When I got to the level, I then realized what the level icon represented. Totem poles. I was greeted by two of them right at the beginning. The music had a Native American sound to it. It seemed to be using the same instruments as, entropy, as the Entropy Forest. It was noticeably different, but just as foreboding. I walked around for three minutes with nothing else in sight besides the totem poles. I didn't realize it until then, but I was expecting another level of with nothing alive in it. After all the activity and entropy, walking around all those multicolored faces, this unnerving level hit me, left me feeling like I was being watched. Only about ten minutes after I started Extus, I was already halfway through. After getting back from the totem pole level, I tried out one of the TV screens to see how strange they were this time. Even more strange than before, apparently. The music for this was the Uranus theme. I switched back to Godzilla to play another level. This level was quite a surprise. It was a normal city level. The colors were gloomy, but even still, this was quite a shock. This was the kind of level I would expect to see in a Godzilla game, and I was kind of mad that I didn't get to play it earlier. The music was the Earth theme. I found it strange that a level fitting in a Godzilla game would show up this late. But there's no point crying over spilled milk. I suppose. I moved Solomon to a grayish green icon that which turned out to be a high tech lab laboratory of some sort. Lots of mechanical drones in this level. 
but Solomon cleared the, through them just like the White Temple enemies. The music was a gritty industrial beat. There was also a strange flying cyborg enemy, which was annoying because it would fly away when you jumped to attack it. Also of interest were these large stasis tanks holding some kind of monster inside. As you would guess, sometimes the monsters awaken and shatter through the glass. I tried to get past the stasis tanks as far as possible, but because the monsters inside proved to be vicious little bastards and upon release. At the end of the level was an elevator, which I used to go down to the bottom of the level where the exit was. Along the way, I was shot at by security drones. I couldn't leave my elevator, so my only defense was the heat beam. The last level type was this simple thing I called the Heart Temple for obvious reasons. Nothing but a big hallway filled with floating enemies like shaped like human hearts. They're incapable of causing you damage. So what you do is run through the level, smashing as many as you can to get all the power-ups. One run through these levels would get you, would get the life meter back up to full, and I would greatly appreciate these levels later. The Hearts Temple music reminded me of a circus tune, had an overly chill for sound to it, which gave the level a really weird feeling. Having seen all the level types, I chose to fight Gorosaurus using Solomon. The music for this fight was Gizaru's theme. It was during the fight that I realized that Solomon is overpowered. A single well-aimed slash can take down as many as four of the enemy's life bars. Due to this, the match was over very quickly. Gorosaurus had no projectile attacks or anything else that can match Solomon's deadly claws. But I kept the fight going just long enough to see if Gorosaurus would use his iconic kangaroo kick. And I was greatly pleased when he did. Even though I knew Solomon, Solomon was my fighting ace, I used Godzilla to battle Kamunga just for variety. I briefly considered using Mothra, but of course Godzilla won out. Kamunga was also a simple opponent, no heat beams or anything. He attacks you by jumping on you, stabbing with his mandibles, and also using his signature webbing stream to paralyze you. Once you get webbed, Kamunga will sometimes take the opportunity to attack, but it's mostly just a way to buy some time, like... Gizara backing you up to a corner until the time runs out, to the, into the corner until the time runs out. This music was Heatera's theme. With Gorosaurus and Kamunga defeated, I was at the end of Extus. Before I fought not Gadira, Ghidorah, there was something I had to do. I wasn't expecting much from it, but for documentation's sake, I took another look at I took a look at the other TV screen. This is what it was. I I I don't think there ever was much reason behind the TV screens. If I were to guess, I'd say it's some random uncontrolled manifestation of the cartridge's abilities, 
or maybe all this makes perfect sense to the game. Who knows? Anyway, Mr. Fawcett's theme was the Saturn music. It was time for the opponent that I had been treading. Not Ghidorah. Although I had gained courage with Solomon's combat advantages, I was still nervous. And when the fight started, I was immediately confused. My opponent was not Gizera. I defeated the imposter with a few strikes and then not Magera appeared. Did it... Did it... It didn't make sense. In order to not to get... In order to get to not, not Ghidorah, I had to battle the previous replacements first. And to battle them, I did... I tore my way through every single one of them until I finally made it to Nat Gadira, who was a Dorad. <laughs> once, once I stopped laughing, I destroyed him with only two slashes. The music stopped and I thought I was going to go back to the board, but the battle wasn't over yet. The real fight was against the Chimera. A monstrous hybrid of all the replacement beasts. This was by far the most difficult boss yet. Every attack of his would cut down whole life bars per use, while attacks against him were greatly weakened. Solomon Slash, for example, was now lucky to take away one half a bar life. During the battle, I gained a great appreciation for two things. The boss fight time limit and the heart temple. Had it not been for those things, I might never have beaten this boss. Take down this behemoth, I came up with a strategy. I would switch between Godzilla and Solomon as one began to get dangerously low on health. I would take them through the Heart Temple while fighting Chimera with the other. I should count my blessings that Chimera couldn't regain lost health. A very interesting thing about Chimera was that the colored sections on his body corresponded to his different body parts. So each body part effectively had its own life meter. The head was invincible as long as it was as the other parts were present. And would always be the last part to be destroyed. In addition to being difficult, it was the longest fight so far. I tried to, rem to remember how many times I got taken out of the fight by this time, but I had lost count around 13. Eventually, I had destroyed all components but the head, which now flew around on its, uh, on its own with an incredible speed. Chimera fought well, but I was extremely determined and once he had reduced to a head, he was no longer the had the power to defeat Solomon. When I heat and I heat beam, beamed him into oblivion. And then the chimera was no more. <sighs> I was exhausted after the fight. After that drawn out fight. And worried that might affect my performance in the and world chase level. The headquarters icon was replaced, but not by the hell beast face. Instead, it was a crucifix.
I was completely stunned. I, I wasn't excited about seeing the Hell Beast icon again, but if there was one, only one good thing about these levels, that is that they were predictable. I had a basic idea of what to expect, but now, now here I was at the end, and the icon was completely different. What did it mean? And, and why a crucifix? It made me very uneasy. I attempted to start the level with Solomon, but couldn't. I got, a, I got this notice that simply stated, Solomon can't enter here. It didn't say why, but I think it, Maybe it has to do with Solomon's demonic appearance. Since Solomon was out of the question, I went with Godzilla instead. Once I saw the level, the crucifix made sense. The level was a graveyard. I was still on edge, thinking that this was some kind of trick. The last level had always involved running from the demonic beast, but I wasn't going to be fooled into thinking this would be any different. So I started running, but after a minute without interruption, I, I slowed down. It was during this time that the music caught my attention. I knew it sounded familiar when I first heard it, but it took a while before I realized what it was. An 8-bit rendition of Prayer for Peace from the first Godzilla movie. A very sad, powerful song, even in this form. After two minutes into the level, I encountered something that I, I wasn't sure how to react to. My first instinct was to run, but this blue statue-esque being simply floated in place. And I felt just compelled to stare at it for a time. Since this was a grave and it was floating over a chapel, I, I guessed that this was some kind of angel watching over the deceased. It gave me a strange but warm feeling. I wouldn't say happy, but... But I felt that I was at peace, somehow. I had never seen this thing before, and yet it seemed very familiar to me. Just as I was going to leave, the Hell Beast appeared, and its presence warped the music into a terrifying discordance, screeching, screeching, and transformed the level, desecrating the tombs as a new ground appeared, comprised of blood-soaked bodies. I could feel my heart now beating out of control. I had no chance to escape with a monster that close. It lunged in for the kill, but the angel got in the way. The demon started, roared, and started clawing through the angel's leg. Tears of blood streamed from its eyes. I wanted to save the angel, but there was nothing I could do. I had honored sacrifice and run. And so I ran through the hellish landscape as fast as I could. The beast soon caught up with me, still swallowing the body of the angel, whose legs it had torn off.
and this height made my terror change to anger. I found now found myself hating this horrible monster. There was no doubt in my mind that it was pure evil, and I wanted it to die. When I got to the end, I remember how I respond I responded to it how it responded to my insult and trance. I spoke to it and said, You're going to pay. This was its response. I had no idea. <laughs> no idea how I'd follow up to that threat. And nothing could have prepared me for the horrors of the final world. Zenith.